Hello. In my last video, I was working on this hugely overcomplicated beast of a Grundig Super VHS video recorder. And I would got it to the point where it would power up, but nothing would work. But it may be that the answer was in the manual. And it's under the service functions. Service functions can be operated by pressing 4934, um, either on the remote or I think on the front panel as well, followed by OK. And then you follow, follow that with one other button, and the button that you press uh, sets different uh, functions. And in this case, we had changed the battery, that 3 volt coin cell on here, and it seems that you have to do a reset of the RAM and EPROM values when you change that battery. So we need to press the pause button. So i had done this off camera a little earlier. Let me show you the sequence. Four, nine, three, four. And if they go into there, then it's uh, reading it, followed by OK and pause. And you have a zero on the display, and the unit is now reset. And what I then did was, I think, power cycle it. And the machine is now functioning. So we'll power it up. We get the uh, test card, which, if you remember from the last video, keeps starting off in black and white and comes to colour later. And we'll work on that problem. But let's uh, pop a tape in. Press play. And all seems well. We've made huge progress with this, haven't we? And do, say, picture search. Reverse picture search. Freeze frame, which I thought was going to be the digital freeze frame. So I thought it was going to be perfect, but it's not. It's just a normal mechanical freeze frame. So, as you'd get from this kind of deck. You could probably improve that. There might be some adjustments somewhere for fine tweaking. Uh, the vertical timing, you, you do get, get that on some video recorders. But fundamentally, that's working. The display is very dim though, but there's something else. Let me switch it off. This is the off button, strangely. And it revert to just the clock display. I think. There we go, press that again. And look, the display is bright. So do we think that's a fault at all, or is it a setting that it's set for a dim clock display? Because clearly the clock is display is capable of working properly. Or do you think it's because there's less segments lit now that it's brighter? I don't think so, because one of the things I did do in my last video was check the uh, voltages to the from the supply to the display. There was plus or minus... 20 something volts and they, they seem fine so I'm not sure there's a fault it might be a setting all right so that's all well and good let's power it up again how do we switch it on the logic is very odd of course because it's uh, Grundig everything has to be weird when it's Grundig let's eject the tape and go back to this display which is in black and white so that's been generated on a board underneath, which is basically a teletext receiver, I think, amongst other things. So uh, there's logic on there, and there will be capacitors, and it might be that there's a capacitor problem in there causing this to be black and white at first. But also, there might well be a 4.43 megahertz um, oscillator, and sometimes the trimmer on those drift a little, and it might be that that just needs a little tweak. Right, let's... Because we, we know it can't be anything to do with the main video recorder part because we're getting good colour on this. It always seems to start a bit grubby and then settle down quite quickly. I don't know why we get all that noise at the very start. Now, if we look at the... this, We've got two remotes. This one's a slightly more worn one. But underneath it's quite nice. You've got various uh, trick functions here. Should we have a look at some of these? So 
On one of these is labeled stop and that's where we get a digital freeze frame. Let's press stop. Oh, it's on here. Stop. Then we get digital freeze frame, but it's dropped to black and white again because it's been generated from that board where we're having a color trouble with. But it's handy just for our purposes at the moment because we know when we're looking at an output from the digital board because of losing color. Go back to play. I think we press CL, I think is clear. I don't have the user manual, only service manual, and it doesn't have the user manual embedded in it as they often do. MS was interesting, I think. It does this sort of pretty thing that you used to see on sort of 70s and 80s uh, TV programs. Uh, so it's stepped around stills there, and this is the live one in the middle. You can tell because I've got loads of dropouts going through it. So I went did a little bit with stills, and then drops the the live one in the middle, and clear. Oh, well, a horrible bit of tape. Let's get past this horrible bit of tape. So I think what this is telling us is this really does not have a digital time base corrector. The trick functions are just that. Uh, we also have zoom, which was quite fun. So press zoom, and you've got a square, a faint square there, and you can move that around. And then say we wanted to look at the, let's zoom in on the time there. And then press the zoom button again, I think and we zoom in on that and you can move it around and you can zoom further I think I mean you don't gain anything you just get more and more noisy and pixelated uh, digital zoom clear comes out of it again speaking of pixelation there's a mosaic button and every time you press that it gets more and more pixelated as was the sort of trick functions of the day and again press clear uh, and uh, maybe some other things here. Strobe. Oh, that. I think it's doing freeze frame move, freeze frame move, freeze frame move. It probably doesn't show quite so well on this video as it would on, on live video. Uh, paint, I'm not sure what that does. Oh, yes, yeah, sort of. Um, you can press, yeah, the paint does. Um, well, reduces a bit depth, I think, really. So. The colors become pixelated. That would be a lot better if the color was working. Now it has other features in here too and I don't know what they all are without the user manual and there's lots of features here there's colors marked up on here all kinds of buttons uh, and at least one of them made the machine go a bit nuts I think this button here I think it just makes it go to heck. No pip picture in picture make makes it go to terrible and that might be because it's trying to do picture input from the tuner and there's no good signal from the tuner so go clear to get back uh, mark what does that do don't know paint oh yeah we did that one es so i'm not sure what that did it seems to switched it off it says es on the display oh it's going into a into Rewind, let's not do that. What are these other buttons? PC? Don't know. So I don't know what all these buttons do, but we found out what some of them do anyway. And these are teletext functions, I think. But of course we have no teletext. Because this machine can actually record teletext onto tape, which is a, a nice feature. Uh, it would be great if we could do that, if we could have done that and recorded some teletext onto tape because of course people like to see old teletext recordings uh, of news and things because that's a nice little bit of history. What's not obvious is if there's any menu in here for setting the machine up, for example display brightness and other features. Right, let's um just go to that stop thing and see if the colors come back on yet. No. So what should we do? There's, I think we're going to have a quick look inside that uh, digital board and see if I can see a 4.43 a, a megahertz trimmer. It might be mentioned in the service manual too. Oh, field memory. There we go. Oh, we could have a quick look at that, couldn't we? Oh, look. 
there's a component there that looks like um, C4038 is a variable trimmer right next to the crystal oscillator. So I'm definitely going to give that a very slight tweak to see if that might bring our colour back in. If it doesn't, the other possibility, of course, is to swap out the entire panel with the one from the other machine. Remember, this is what we called smoky, and the other one was squeaky. Squeaky's got the squeaky power supply. So uh, let's just have a look at that, uh, that digital board. I may not actually need to remove the board. I may just need to gain access through the screening can. Ah, uh, looking at the back side of the board. How do you get to look at the other side? Oh, that's all good. They've soldered it on. So they gave you access to the wrong side. Oh, that's not very helpful, is it? So I'm going to have to desolder these two blobs before I can uh, get to the front of the PCB. Here's the board in question. I was looking for a 4.43 megahertz crystal. There isn't one, but there is one double that frequency. So I think that is the crystal we're looking to adjust. And there's the preset. So I'm going to mark it so I can put it back to exactly the same spot if this doesn't work. OK, so let's switch it on. Hopefully we get into that test card. And very, very slightly adjust that crystal oscillator turned it one way nothing turned it the other way nothing if it was going to work it would have worked in a small adjustment of that oh there's another frequent there's another oscillator up here let's go look at that one i think it's the same frequency adjust one way Nothing. Other way. Nothing. OK, we're not winning. So let's swap over the entire panel from the one from the other machine. Only three connectors, so that's quite straightforward. Let's hope that helps. No. So the fault lies on another board. Oh well. Surprising though, isn't it? Because the fault only happens when you're using this feature. But uh, nonetheless, the fault is somewhere else. Or they both have the same fault, which is possible, I suppose. Let's um, screw that into place. There's a 4.43 megahertz crystal oscillator, but that may be a different part of the circuit. I will attempt to tweak that. Oh, it's coming to colour now anyway. <laughs> Is that because I marked this up? Well, it's in colour now anyway. I have to um, park that problem for a moment. This uh, little screening spring keeps falling off. Belongs on the top of there. Going straight into colour now. That does mean we can demonstrate some of these uh, fancy features a little bit better now. Ah, uh, it's getting upset by the lights, I think. VHS does that, you know. So I'll press the this MS button, and there we go. We can get to see this wonderful feature where it does all the stills and then the moving one in the middle. That's rather wonderful clear and we'll do the stop and we get a perfect freeze frame now it's been mentioned to me that it's not full resolution let's have a look bear in mind this is a VHS tape not a super VHS tape but looking at the bars we can see the resolution up to the middle there not really beyond we hit stop I would say that resolution has not changed 
but it might be that in super VHS we're dropping to sort of VHS resolution. Uh, we can try some of these other things. Mosaic. Okay, so we get all these lovely boxes. Strobe. Uh, oh, we can mix them. So we've got mosaic and strobe mixed together, which is fun. Uh, zoom. Can we zoom as well? No, that would be too much. And the zoom. Let's look at those bars, actually. And then hit zoom and it goes in there. And it gets more and more ropey as you go in. Paint. There we go. We wanted to see the paint one in colour, didn't we? Uh, can we zoom in on that, I wonder? Yes, you see what it's doing? It's sort of pixelating the colours. Yeah, it's just like it's dropping the resolution of the colours. So that's what the uh, paint thing does. So all of these features are very much uh, trick functions that you can do just with that external board and it's not anything that is being processed in normal operation. So you wouldn't say there's any kind of time-based corrector in this machine. Really this function is no better and probably somewhat worse than the Panasonic NVFS88 uh, Super HS machine which I already have, which uses the same G mechanism. But it's uh, certainly an interesting and quirky machine to play with, but in terms of actual usefulness today, it's uh, not really anything special. Right, let's uh, final reassembly. And I want to check this uh, color stability on the uh, digital board. It's certainly looking solid now. Let's switch it off let it cool down for a while. One small detail I still need to correct is I have the 1 amp instead of 1.25 amp fuse in this one so I'll just uh, swap that over from the other machine until I've ordered some more of the correct fuses. Well, it really is going straight into good, solid, reliable colour as soon as I switch this on. So what's your best guess as to why that's happening? I reckon that both of these have a capacitor issue somewhere. There's a capacitor that's a little low, and what's happened is this one, when it warms up, the capacitor reforms enough that it drops into colour. And what's happening with the board that's in here is obviously not as bad. This is the one that came from uh, Squeaky. Uh, I reckon that what's happened is the board has reformed completely in just being powered up for a few seconds. So it's not exactly fixed, but that's uh, much better with the uh, digital board from Squeaky installed in Smokey. So the only outstanding issue really is why is the display dim? But the weird thing about that is that it's not always dim. That uh, when we switch the machine off, when we switch it off and it reverts to the time, there's nothing dim about that. It's absolutely fine. You can see that. Uh, we've got a lot of light in here, but that is a, a normal brightness. There's nothing wrong with that. So I'm not suspecting an actual fault. I think it's sort of set up. Let's just look at some of the features of this machine. It's um, incredible. <laughs> it's got a lot on it. For example, here we can do adjustments between left and right volume levels. It's got stereo microphones in. You can adjust hi-fi volume line and master. Um, not sure what they mean, but it might be that you can adjust the ratio of hi-fi stereo to linear stereo that is a feature i've seen on some jvc machines or panasonic or both perhaps in the sort of semi-pro area as semi-pro as svhs can ever get uh, where you can mix the linear audio and the uh, hi-fi 
Many machines allow you to do a 50-50 mix, but not a variable mix. In the professional machines, though, typically you actually get stereo linear audio. So you get four channels, albeit two of them are abysmal quality. Uh, but this is a Panasonic G mechanism, so I'd be very surprised if there's a stereo audio head in that. So it's probably just min mono linear and hi-fi stereo mix. Uh, so you've got hi-fi line and master. So exactly how that works, I'm not sure, but it will be something along the lines of mixing those audios. Um, here we've got uh, composite and S-video inputs at the front, which is always useful. Nice that if you plug left in only, then you get mono. Uh, so we've got a switch in that socket. Um, quarter inch uh, high, uh, stereo headphone socket out instead of the normal 3.5 millimeter you get on most uh, domestic video recorders. There's some sort of remote control connector there. We have what looks like volume control, crispening, no, doesn't crispen chips, but uh, that will be a sharpness control. Actually, you get that on lots of Panasonic uh, SVHS machines as well. Um, tracking controls, I like to see tracking controls on here, on the front. Uh, a lot of Panasonic machines like the AG4700 tracking is on the remote control only, which is infuriating. Tone select, so that'll just be um, high level. Oh, I've switched on, which is why the brightness has come on. That'll adjust the, uh, just a sort of high frequency filter for the audio. That says headphone and it's a backslash. What that does, I do not know. And then it's ES, we didn't know what that one does. Mark manual mix trick hmm press trick and the picture disappears and dub for audio dubbing and aux input that'll be this is high hi-fi there so quite a lot of uh, controls on the front here but i'm not seeing anything for brightness on the display it says stereo hi-fi tracks here and says man and so there's a manual auto, manual record level so oh is that what this is could that just be the volume could that just be the recording level perhaps these may just be audio record levels yes it might just be that they're record rather than playback mix wish i had the user manual and around the back do we have anything useful So the wisdom seems to be that this DIN connector here, or variant of a DIN connector, is for connecting to a Grundig TV, and it sort of syncs the two together. Uh, we've got S-Video and audio connectors at the back as well. This strange port here, I'm guessing, I'm guessing that that would take a plug-in module for when this machine is sold in markets where they don't tend to use SCART so much. So that's why you've got extra audio and video connectors here. That would be my guess on that. And there's a control here that is really vague as to what it does, but it might be that vertical stability thing. I don't believe that's a modulator adjustment. That'll be somewhere else. Let's try adjusting that slightly when we're playing a when we're in freeze frame and see if we can stabilize the picture. Bearing in mind, this is a user control, so we're not going to do any harm. Nope, that's not what it does. But I don't believe that's uh, the uh, adjustment for the modulator, because it's an electrical preset. really thought that would um, stabilise the freeze frame. Something that might be fun to try. If I press stop and freeze frame the image, can I then stop the tape? Can I even eject the tape? Oh, that's rather wonderful. So I've got a freeze frame from the tape, which is held when the tape is not even in there. Now that is quite cool, isn't it? I do notice that the chroma is dropped by a line or two, which is a, a common problem with VHS and indeed beta, that the chroma is dropped relative to the luma, but it's rarely so obvious as it is on this particular freeze frame. Can you see there how the uh, chroma It is below the line where the luminance is and here where the black is the red is drooping down 
as, and as is the blue there. So chroma is definitely quite visibly dropped relative to the luminance. And if you have multiple generations of VHS or SVHS, that becomes more and more prominent and uh, can actually be quite bad and ruin your whole work because the chroma is just sitting way below the luminance. Uh, my favourite digital time-based correctors, these digital time-based correctors have a feature where you can colour shift and every time you press that, the chroma goes up one line and you can compensate for that. Um, but of course most people didn't have these things, they're expensive. So adjusting the uh, brightness of the display turns out to be simple. The on and off brightnesses are controlled separately simply with these buttons. So this is the on brightness and of course that's what I was on, I was on minimum uh, and I can turn that up to much brighter. And then if I switch the machine into standby then we have the off brightness which can be lower if you want all the same. So there we have it. Display brightness was not a fault. Worked out a few more of the functions. This button here, the backslash one, allows you to select linear mono audio or stereo or either audio track. So stereo is what we'd normally leave it in. Okay, understood that one. So this freeze frame problem uh, where you can see that you might be able to see that that's bouncing up and down. Apparently what we do is we type in 85 28 OK and then press the up and down buttons and we should be able to stabilize the freeze frame. And I have to say that's not working in the slightest. So everything else I've managed to get to work I think but I can't get a particularly stable freeze frame. You may not see it on that so much on your version of this, but uh, it's bouncing, every, every field is bouncing. But, oh well, it's a minor problem really, I'm not going to worry about it. I think we'll stop there. So that's the Grundig VS680 VPT. We've got it into sufficiently good working order that we can certainly play with the features and enjoy it. Uh, and we have two remote controls. I think the other machine, that's the one with the squeaky power supply and possibly the slightly less good of the two digital boards, um, that may not be worth pursuing any further since it's become obvious that these machines are not all that they might be. You know, there's no time-based corrector. There's nothing even remotely like that. So uh, they're a bit of fun, but in terms of being able to use it for my business, uh, they're not especially useful. Still, we enjoyed that, didn't we? Now, uh, something else I've been working on, which should be simple. Sometimes I have uh, cases where I need to show an oscillogram, so something on the oscilloscope, and I've got this um, beautiful uh, TDS3012 uh, digital storage scope behind me. But, of course, this is not very convenient trying to show that over my shoulder. There's nowhere convenient to put it here. It'd be nice if I could show you uh, oscillograms on screen, captured by the workshop computer. Uh, now you can buy uh, USB oscilloscopes, but a lot of them are rubbish. So I've seen one that uh, Adrian's Digital Basement was playing with, and he reckoned it was quite good, which is the O1 VDS 1022i, the i being very important, I think, when you're using it with a desktop computer like this. That means it's uh, insulated so that the ground for the USB is not the same as the ground for your test circuit. So. Uh, that should be ideal. So I bought this from Amazon recently and I have been struggling to install the drivers. It needs USB drivers. It comes with a disk and I have attempted to install it and it just keeps on saying no device found. So uh, that's proving it a bit of a challenge. I need to overcome that. This is only going to be useful for fairly low frequency. I mean, it's not the same as a TDS3012 but just for give, giving you basic sort of oscillograms of especially sort of audio and up to some uh, tens of kilohertz frequencies, it could be handy. I had mentioned the other day that uh, I might do a, a quick video about uh, how customers over the years have occasionally upset me. And actually one of my friends who works in the same business has also given me a little tale as well. So I will make a short video, but 
it's going to be a little bit talk to camera that one i can't do an awful lot you know i'm not going to be demonstrating stuff and getting involved in things so i won't make that too long but uh that probably will be the next one uh, i've had a few comments of people saying they're really looking forward to seeing that so i will do that one and uh, we'll work on plenty of other audio and video technology in the near future bye for now